Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. This video is my sewing blog but kind of a making vlog too for October 2020. I realized that I've been making a lot of things that are not sewing related and I haven't been sharing them with you. So I'm really excited to share some of those things today. I'm also in a location in my house that I've never shown you before. This is a new desk setup for me that I created in August. I was working a freelance job and my old laptop that I've been using for years and years now started to make this whirring sound and I just freaked out that it was going to break down, that I wouldn't be able to do any work. All the Apple stores are closed, so there was no way that I could just go to the store and buy a new computer. So I ended up ordering this new desktop computer and it took about two weeks for it to get here, which gave me plenty of time to set up this little corner in my bedroom for a desk. <laughs> I know you might think, why didn't I put it in the sewing room? And I did think about that. I have a desk in my sewing room, but it's dedicated to my sewing machines. And that room also is the one that gets the hottest in the summer and the coldest in the winter. So I knew that in summer, it just would not be comfortable to work at. Like in the winter, I can have my space heater and warm up a little bit, but it's just so hot that to sit in that room in the heat of summer, I would just be like dripping sweat all the time. So it ended up that this corner of my bedroom was just gonna be the best place. So I had some fun kind of decorating this little corner. I've tried to deck it out with things that are inspirational to me. I have some prints that I bought from the illustrator Lisa Congdon when I was in Portland a couple of years ago now, I think. Um, and so I'm like, I'm so glad that I finally got them um, up and framed. And I got a new planner. This is the Get to Work book. I highly recommend it. I have bounced around like a lot of different planners and online to do um, like checklist tools. And this one is one that I like really use regularly, um, like really every weekday. I write everything down that I need to do and check it off. So I do highly recommend it. I'll give you a peek. <laughs> so like here's this week, a lot of things. Yesterday I was supposed to film and then that day just like did not work for me. So here's a more typical week, all the things that I want to get done in a day and checking them off. Um, I do try to keep the weekends a little freer just, you know, for balance. Um, so anyway, love this workbook. I will put a link down in the show notes because I think it is really great. Um, and I really do have problems kind of sticking with a system. I like coming up with the systems, but it's hard for me to stick with them. But so far I've had this one a couple months, maybe two and a half months, and I still use it almost every day. I also made these cute little macrame hanging planters to decorate my work area. And macrame is a new craft for me. I've been knitting since I was like eight years old, but I've never tried macrame. So I first started doing it probably in July. I know I totally forgot to share it on the vlog, but um, I wanted to redo my patio area and cause I have so many plants. I'm just like obsessed with plants and propagating them. And I have them all over the ground and I wanted to lift them up more and put some on the wall. So, so I got this book, Macrame Plant Hangers, and it's by Christine Borgia. And it has a whole bunch of patterns for different types of macrame plant hangers. And it also teaches you the basics of doing macrame. I made a few plant hangers for my patio and kind of got the hang of it, but I was looking for some different designs. So I checked out a bunch of macrame books from the library and kind of looked through them to see what I liked. And I found a book where I really liked the patterns and there was a lot that I wanted to make in it. And that is Macrame at Home. And this is by Natalie Renee. So these are from this book. And I have one more thing from this book. Then hanging in the other corner of my room, I also made this from the Macrame at Home book. Um, and I used an embroidery hoop for it. Pretty fun. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but I'm trying to be okay with that. 
Um, I think these are really both great books. I like the patterns a lot in Macrame at Home, but I like the instructional photos for how to make the different knots more in this book. And that's because this book uses photos that are, that use like brown and different color rope. And this one uses all white rope and it's just really hard to see enough contrast in the photos. So I think they're both great books. Um, it's been really fun to do macrame. I have another macrame piece from this book, like already tied up to a dowel and I'm excited to get to work on it. So besides macrame, I've also been doing a fair amount of knitting. I really like knitting as something that I can do while sitting on the couch and watching TV and I can take it on the road when I go on a trip. And this is a blanket that I started making before I even moved to this house. So like two and a half years ago. And it's a cotton yarn from Knit Picks. I've not blocked this um, and it's a free pattern, I believe, from Knit Picks. It has kind of this um, lattice pattern, um, pretty simple to make, but it is like kind of long. It's a nice little lap blanket, really soft yarn. And I finally finished it maybe two weeks ago after two and a half years. So that feels like a really big accomplishment to finally finish this. And it's very gratifying because my cat loves sleeping on it. All I have to do is like put the blanket on the couch and scrunch it up and he'll come over and sit down in it. Also on the knitting front, I think I might have mentioned this in my last vlog. I'm making a knitted tank top and this is the Emma tank. And this uses a half brioche stitch, which I've never done before. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to it, but I think it is really pretty and I'm using stash yarn. I've had to und undo this and re-knit it a few times because I decided I wanted it longer and then I messed up and then you know I like undid it because I thought I messed up but I didn't mess up. Anyway it's been a little bit of a process but it's nice and I'm like maybe 40 30% of the way done. A really nice project and again using stash yarn that I've had around for years and years. The main sewing I did in the last month or so was really, I guess it was actually at the end of September, but it was after I filmed my last vlog and I made two swim items. The first one is this swim top um, and I used the K pattern by Seamwork. And that pattern is for a top and shorts, but I just made the top and I now have a blog post all about it because um, I've made it three times. So I made this first version um, with swim fabric and I did not put elastic into the armholes and neck hole and it really didn't work very well for swimming. So I cut off the edges and put on the elastic um, and it works much better. So I have more details about this top over on the blog and I will link to that in the show notes. Then on a whim, I made this one piece swimsuit. I had elastic in my stash and swimsuit fabric in my stash. So um, pretty convenient. I didn't have to go anywhere, or order anything. And I used a pattern that is a vintage. This is a vintage stretch and sew pattern. I think I probably picked this up at the thrift store. Um, this is a pattern company that was based in Eugene, Oregon, which is my hometown. And the thrift stores there always had a ton of these patterns. So I got this pattern and I didn't realize that there aren't any instructions in here. It's really just all the pattern pieces and then one page that tells you about the pattern pieces. And you need a book. Oh yeah, here's the page. This is like all the instructions for 14 patterns. So I went looking online and I found the book that goes with this and shows tells you how to make everything. And I think I got it from a used seller on Amazon. Um, but it was really great, really helpful. Yeah, this is from the 90s era of Stretch and Sew and they go back to, I think, the 60s or 70s. Um, so some pretty cool patterns. Their style of construction is a little bit different because the fabrics back then were so different. Um, but it was really fun to sew, just a really great basic swimsuit. I was able to wear it during my little trip at the end of September. Um, I'll put a photo in here, a little selfie I took of 
me in the swimsuit. I didn't get a full body. Um, <laughs> but again, like the fit was good. I dropped the armholes just a little bit for style reasons. Um, and I put in a shelf bra. So I've made a few swimsuits before, two, two of them actually using stretch and sew patterns. Um, and I do really like their patterns for swimsuits. So you can find these patterns a lot on Etsy, um, probably on eBay, just anywhere you would find vintage patterns. Another creative thing I've been working on a lot in the last couple months is baking and cooking. I think that's not uncommon. We've all been home a lot more without as much easy access to purchased food. And so it's, yeah, so we've all been cooking a lot more at home. Um, I used to bake a lot, especially when I was younger, but just as I got busier with work, I've been doing less of it. Plus when I had to go gluten-free probably about 13 years ago, baking just wasn't as fun as it used to be because it wasn't as easy and things just didn't taste as good. So I didn't want to put in the effort for stuff that I didn't really enjoy eating. But I've been getting into it more and in large part that's thanks to sourdough. So my dad is also gluten-free and he has been into sourdough since the 70s or earlier. Um, so I always grew up with sourdough starter in the fridge. Um, he's He's been like very on to all those things that are trending now. Um, so he created a gluten-free sourdough starter and he gave me a portion of it. And I've been having a lot of fun baking with it. I really enjoy getting to feed it and see it bubble and grow. Um, and so I've been making rolls with it. I've made pizza, which was really, really exciting to make my own pizza that actually tasted good. I've never done it before. I've been making banana bread. I made a pear cake this month, which was really exciting. I'll put in a picture because it's really beautiful. And then I've also just been making a lot of soups. I have an instant pot that I really enjoy using. Um, it's super fast to cook beans. So I've been making a lot of lentil and split pea soups. It's really nice because I can make a big batch and then save it and I have it for a bunch of meals. So as I mentioned before, in kind of the end of the summer, I was working this freelance job. And then right before my vacation, the freelance job ended. So when I was looking at October and starting to plan October, I was thinking, you know, it would be great if I can just take this time and focus on my projects for So DIY and get them done. And then in November, maybe I could take a little time off and work on some personal projects. So for October, for So DIY, I've been really focused on revamping, resizing, and rebranding my Nita wrap skirt. Put in a photo. This is a pattern that I did or released in 2016, and it's the last pattern in my collection to be rebranded and resized. It's actually my least popular pattern, so I just left it to the end for the resizing, but somebody emailed me and asked about it, and I just thought, you know, it'd be really nice to be able to say, oh, all my patterns go to this size. So that one is now out with testers. I sent it out a few days ago. I already have one person who's finished their skirt. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And hopefully by the middle of November, I will have the new pattern released. If you've already purchased the Nita Wrap Skirt pattern, then don't worry, you will get an updated pattern for free. The Kneaded Wrap Skirt already has a full photo tutorial on the blog, and I'm not really sure if I'm going to be doing any additional videos or tutorials because um, I feel like that sew along is pretty complete, but I am going to make another sample for fun. One of my testers emailed me and asked if they could make a muslin using flannel, and it occurred to me that it would be really awesome to use flannel as a lining for this skirt. The skirt has an optional lining. And so I'm planning to use this leftover flannel fabric. I made, um, I've made a bunch of things with this fabric actually. Um, do a lining and flannel and then the exterior and denim I think would be really great for winter. You can just wear leggings or, um, or tights and it would be nice and cozy. So hopefully I have some good denim in my stash. I know there's some stuff in there. I just need to go and like take a look and see how much yardage I have. The other big project that I've been working on in October is my improvisational quilting for garment sewists e-course. 
I'm sure I've mentioned this a bunch of times before. I've been working on this for a few years now, honestly. Um, and it started out as an ebook and then it's morphed into a class. So earlier this year, I got a lot of work done on it and I took a lot of videos and then I got distracted by some other projects and kind of set it to the side for a while. So it's been really great to pick it back up. I've been using my planner to help me like check off all these boxes of things that I want to do. And I have a group of amazing testers who are waiting to beta test the course. And I really hope I'll be able to send it off to them next week. And then I hope it will be done by Thanksgiving, but um, definitely by the end of the year. I'm really excited to share this course. It's a great way to use up scraps. It is intended for people who sew garments already. Um, so it's just a really fun, different way to use your sewing skills, use up your scraps and have fun. If you're interested in the improvisational quilting e-course, I will put a link down in the show notes to sign up for the newsletter that is all about sustainability and this course. I just finished making the quilt back for one of my improvisational quilts yesterday. This is a pretty big one, um, took a lot of time, but I have a number of quilts now that I need to actually quilt. So um, the actual quilting is not as fun to me as the piecing, so I kind of have to work myself up to it. But I'm looking forward to having a bunch of new quilts for winter. It's already starting to get cold here in LA, and I have really poor insulation and poor heating. So it gets very cold in my house and I will definitely be using my quilts while I sit here at my desk and work on my patterns and everything. This month, I also started a new video series here on YouTube of tutorials for gifts that you can make using your scrap fabric. The first tutorial is how to make mitered napkins using scrap fabric. And then the second one is how to make a 3D style mask, I'll model it. And this is using scrap fabric from Berman's. And hopefully you can hear me. So this uses scrap fabric. And um, I really like the way these look. It even has an optional little nose bridge so you can put a piece of metal in there and mold it to your face. Um, I tried a whole bunch of patterns and I often felt like the sewing kind of took too long. So I developed a process of construction that makes making this 3D style really fast and easy. I'll put a link in here to the video and then in the show notes, I'll put a link to the blog. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get a free template download. Starting up again next week, I'm planning to do more videos with gifts using your fabric scraps. Coming up in November, my Alley sweatshirt pattern is going to be a featured pattern for Sew My Style. Sew My Style is a year long sewing challenge. And when you sign up to their newsletter, you get a coupon code or two or three coupon codes every month for selected patterns of the month and you get 20% off. And then during that month, you make the pattern and share it the last week or last Sunday of the month. So I'm really honored that they chose my Alley sweatshirt. Um, to be one of the patterns for November. I was talking to them about this opportunity back in December of last year. They were really wanting to incorporate more men's patterns. And I told them I was planning to revamp this pattern and add a gender neutral style. So um, I ended up doing that and re-releasing it in March. And I was really partially um, inspired or pushed along to get it done by this Sew My Style project. So if you want 20% off the Alley sweatshirt pattern, I'm wearing it right now. Um, this is a scoop neck with a tapered body. Um, and then view A is a crew neck with a straight body. It's a little bit longer and has a kangaroo pocket. Um, anyway, if you want 20% off, make sure to sign up for their newsletter. And I will put a link down in the show notes for more info about that. One other thing I've just been thinking about and pondering this month is the idea of stash zero. I think because I've been working on my improvisational quilts and I've just had my scraps of fabric all over my studio and it's been like such a mess, um, partly because of that and partly with this quarantine, I've only bought a little bit of fabric, but I still feel like I have so much in my stash. Like I haven't gone to a fabric store in eight months 
and I've placed one online order of fabric for my summer sweatsuit samples, but I still have so much fabric and I'm just thinking, I've just been thinking, am I ever going to run out of fabric? Would I ever be able to achieve stash zero? <laughs> and I then I thought, I wonder how much fabric I have. And I thought about weighing it all. And then I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds like a chore <laughs> to get all the fabric out and then attempt to weigh it somehow. So I have a lot of my fabric cataloged in Trello. And I went through and counted everything that's in Trello. So cataloged in Trello, I have 110 yards of woven fabric and 20 yards of knit fabric. I know there's more than that. There's probably like 30 yards of knit fabric, but that's a lot of fabric. Um, and I was kind of thinking, maybe I should just try to like use up all my fabric. I've been trying for years to use up more of my fabric and then I buy more and it kind of never, the stash never dwindles, <laughs> I think has gone down a little bit, but it's not totally there. Um, but then I'm also thinking, why do I want to stash zero? If I run out of fabric, then I won't have anything left to sew. Um, anyway, I'm just pondering stash zero and thinking if I had some sort of goal, maybe it would inspire me to try out some new patterns and make more things for myself. Um, but I'm not sure. Have you ever thought about stash zero? I know there are some people out there who have really small stashes. I don't. Um, I've been sewing garments for 25 years and I inherited fabric from my grandma and my great aunt. So I have a lot of fabric um, and I love it. I love having it there. I, you know, I love that I can just go to my stash and find something to use when I want to try out a new pattern. Um, and it's handy to have fabric around to make muslins and things. So I don't know. I just keep thinking about stash zero. Um, I don't think I would really ever get to stash zero, but maybe it would be good to get to like stash 50 or stash 75 instead of stash 130, you know? <laughs> anyway, this is just something I've been thinking about. I was thinking maybe I could weigh everything that I've made this year. And then I would, you know, kind of be able to quantify like, oh, this is how much I've produced. This is how much I've used. Um, anyway, just kind of thinking about that. Speaking of new patterns and stash fabric, my friend Kimberly from Straight Stitch Patterns recently released a new pattern called the Meadowwood. It's this really pretty oversized blouse. And I think it'd be a really nice project to make. Um, so I was looking through my stash to see if I had any appropriate fabric. And I think this one might work. I need to check the yardage and make sure that I have enough of this, but um, that's just one of the projects that I would like to make. I still haven't made that Audi play suit by Amy Nicole that I was talking about. Also, I have a stash fabric for it. Um, and maybe just all my stash zero pondering is really that I haven't been making clothes for myself besides those swimsuits. I mean, I have, I guess. I guess I just used to sew a lot more for myself, but now I'm making more things for my patterns and my classes and I kind of miss making things that are just for fun for myself just you know make a shirt make a jumpsuit something that I haven't been doing quite as much of this year so I feel like back in the day I used to make one new thing a week which is a lot really like 52 things a year it's a whole lot of stuff and my closets have too many clothes in them already but anyway but having a big sesh is good for quarantine time because I will have plenty of things to work with and keep me busy. Well, I think that's it for October. I um, definitely had a lot to share this month and I hope that you enjoyed hearing about it. I'd love to hear what you've been up to, what you've been cooking or making, whether it's sewing or not. And I hope that you all have a great November. Happy sewing.